sure when you were in Vegas a couple of weeks ago shaking your stank funky ass auditioning for Chocolate City, a role that I'm sure you did not get, Drew had to pick up the slack in the household, right? So what's the problem? <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Roxy, with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. Today, we are reviewing The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 15, episode 15, I think, the last episode before the finale. We have finally made it, okay? And in all honesty, I probably never would have made it if it wasn't for y'all, because I would have stopped watching a long time ago. So this episode was cute. We got to see Sheree living beyond her means as usual. We got to see Ralph being his usual disgusting, condescending self. What else did we see? We saw some of Drew, but what we didn't see a lot of this episode was Kenya. And I don't know if you've been on Twitter and on Instagram, but Kenya has definitely been voicing her opinion about Bravo not really showing what she got going on on this show, right? Apparently during this time, Kenya has opened up her own salon, right? We saw a little bit of that, but they didn't show her grand opening and Kenya feels that that was actually edited out. So a lot of people are wondering if Bravo is starting to phase Kenya out the same way that they kind of phase Nini out. I wonder, what do y'all think about that? I do think that the cast needs a shakeup, but I think that if they got rid of Kenya... That would be, I don't, I don't know if that would be a good move. Tell me what y'all think below. But as this episode opens up, we see Kenya at her salon with Cynthia. And Cynthia lets Kenya know that her divorce with Mike Hill is finalized, okay? And in Cynthia's confessional, she's like, listen, me and Mike done got married and divorced all while Kenya is still going through this divorce. We need to speed it up, right? And I'm sure that's exactly what Kenya would like to do. But as we know, Mark is full of shenanigans and he keeps playing games and he keeps doing things to prolong this whole divorce proceeding. We also see a clip of Marlo asking her life coach when would be a good time for her to introduce Scott Lee to the boys. Um, uh, Marlo, that should be the last thing on your list. Clearly, you and the boys have a lot to work out together amongst yourselves, right? The boys go through a lot, especially with their mother's condition. Why would you introduce a man to that picture? A man who you have not been dating for that long, a man who you don't even... A man who, let's keep it real, is just on payroll, like what... Okay, next. Now we see Candy, Drew, and Todd at the shoot for the movie The Pass, right? So they are in hair and makeup, and Drew starts discussing this sex scene that she has to do because she's so nervous because she's never done anything like that ever before in her entire life, right? Okay, Todd says that he's happy that Drew is an actress because that means that he doesn't have to do a whole bunch of takes, which means that he doesn't have to spend a lot of money. Okay, we know that's the bottom line as far as Todd is concerned, which is understandable. The movie is being filmed in 10 days. Now, 10 days is a short period of time to film a movie, but do y'all remember that movie, the Tyler Perry movie, A Fall From Grace? Remember, and it got clowned because of its lack of continuity. The wigs, the makeup, the bad acting, it was just all a mess. Now, I personally enjoyed the movie and I've watched it a couple times because I think it's a really interesting plot. But that movie got dragged, okay? And I remember hearing that that movie was filmed in seven days and it showed. <laughs> It showed, but I enjoyed it. So I guess we'll see how everything turns out with Candy and Todd's movie, The Past, okay? In the next scene, we see Sonya, Ross, and baby Ducey, and they're headed over to Dr. Jackie's office so that Sonya can make sure that she is really pregnant. This scene, I feel a way... Let me know what y'all think, but I'm going to say this. Sonia says that she knows that most people would not tell a child this early that there is a baby coming because anything can happen and you don't want to get the baby's hopes up and God forbid things don't work out, right? But she says that she's not the one keeping baby Deuce in the loop. He is the loop. And I'm like, no, you are the parent. <laughs> like, what? What? And like I said in my past review, I honestly feel like when it comes to these moms wanting to make babies or siblings, Kenya and Sonya, they're really putting it on their kids, right? Like Kenya's putting it on Brooklyn, like, oh, Brooklyn wants a sibling. And Sonya's putting it on Deuce, like, oh, Deuce really wants a sibling. And she says, Deuce has been asking her, when am I going to get a sibling? When am I going to get a sibling? And I'm like, yeah, no. I think that she can definitely have an age-appropriate conversation with baby Deucey to be like, look, Deucey, babies don't just fall out the sky, okay? And it's a lot for mommy and for any woman to have to have a baby. So that's not something that you can just demand, right? And in all honesty, I don't think that Brooklyn and Deuce are walking around the house bullying their moms for a sibling. I just, 
I just don't think that's happened. Do I think that it's been a conversation? Do I think that they brought it up? Yeah, but the way that Kenya and um, Sanya make it seem like Brooklyn is just walking around like, we're my sister. We're my brother, mom. I don't think that that's happening. <laughs> I, I honestly don't. And I honestly think that if they kind of just explained it to them, Brooklyn and Deuce would be like, oh, okay. And then they'll go like play with a toy or something. I don't think that it's as pressing as they're making it seem. Maybe it's for storyline, but I don't think that it's really giving what they want us to think is giving. You get what I'm saying? Now, with that being said, I am happy for Sanya being pregnant and having another child. If that's what she really wants... Because we remember last season or a couple seasons ago, Sanya was crying about Ross not being present while she was pregnant and not being present after Deuce was born. And on top of that, for this past season, Ross hasn't been there. Hasn't he been in Austin, Texas? And then he popped up with a Rolex. So Sanya let us know that her reservation for having a kid was because Ross really wasn't present. But now her reason for having a kid is because Deuce wants a sibling. As a viewer, we jump from Ross not being involved as a father, and that's why she doesn't want to have another kid, to now she wants to have another kid because Deuce wants to have a sibling. But w what about Ross? Has anything changed with Ross? Because all we see is that he's never home. So what's, it, it, what's the update? I just feel like they're putting it on the kids, and I don't like that. It's like when parents say that they stuck together for the kids, like... <laughs> Don't put that on me. I didn't ask y'all to stay together, okay? What y'all think? So anyway, Sanya is five weeks pregnant. And as we know, it's a geriatric pregnancy. And we find out that Ross does not know what geriatric means. So Dr. Jackie does let her know that she is at a heightened risk for complications, especially because she is over 35 and because she's an African-American woman. So now we are at Candy and Todd's house, okay? And it is day three of them shooting for the movie The Past, right? They're shooting at their house. <laughs> and I saw a lot of people who thought that that was a problem. And I, I don't think that that was a problem at all. Their house is absolutely beautiful. And Todd said that they saved six figures by filming at their home. Now we know that Todd's main goal is to cut costs like he does at OLG. But I'm not mad at it. Tyler Perry's done it. Remember Diary of a Mad Black Woman when Charles' bitch ass was dragging Helen by her hair out the house and when she should have let him drown in that damn bathtub when he was blowing them bubbles in the tub? Yeah, that was at Tyler Perry's house. So... I don't see the problem. And also, Coming to America 2 was filmed at Rick Ross's mansion, which I think used to be um, either Evander Holyfield or Mike Tyson's mansion. I can't remember which one. But yeah, obviously celebrities, they have huge homes, huge estates. I don't see the problem with using their home to film a movie, a music video, or anything like that. My only peeve is the sex scene being filmed in their actual bed. But I guess they bring people in and out of their bedroom allegedly anyway, so I guess it wasn't that big of a deal. Right? Oh, okay. So Drew is very nervous about this girl-on-girl -girl scene because, again, she's never done anything with a girl. It's very important to her that we know that, okay? But Candy does have an intimacy coach on the scene, which I think is amazing. Candy and Monietta are discussing the role in the scene with Drew, and they ask her, like, is Ralph cool with it? And Drew says, look, I gave him an overview of the script, but I didn't go into detail on what I'll be doing and then Drew's confessional she says you know he don't know everything about my job so I don't got to tell him everything about my job uh Drew you don't even know what his job title is Let, let's start there <laughs> let's start there what does Ralph do like I said I'm gonna ask in every video what does he do at least Ralph knows that you're an actress you don't even know your husband's job title that's a big difference Drew so now they start discussing Courtney possibly calling Drew her cousin, cousin-in-law, <laughs> a bitch. So Manetta pulls up the recording, because remember, she's the one who had the recording from that night. And if you watched my last review, the conversation that these ladies had about that clip went exactly the same way that I described it. They also aren't sure if Courtney was talking about Sanya or about Drew, right? <laughs> they were like, wait, is she talking about Drew or is she talking about Sanya? And then Manetta was like, well, would Sanya let uh, Courtney call her a bitch to her face? <laughs> But that's the same thing I was saying. So they were just as confused as me. I will say this, though, about the shoot. Even though it was shot in their home, they had staff on deck, right? Like, at least it wasn't Todd behind the camera and Candy was the one doing hair and makeup. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't no rinky-dink shit like that. Like, they had staff on deck. So now in this next scene, we see Sheree and her face. 
And those two are planning a little sip and see for Sheree's grandbaby, Mecca. Sheree tells the planners that there's a budget, but there is no budget because when it's all said and done, I'm not even going to pay y'all. So it don't even matter. <laughs> okay, she didn't say that last part, but she said there's a budget, but there is no budget. Now, listen, we all know that Sheree don't pay allegedly, right? And Atlanta, a lot of people know each other in Atlanta, right? Like that scene is very tight knit. So I would think that by now, if you are working with a Sheree Whitfield, you know to have your paperwork right. I would assume so. I'm, I'm sure that the word has gotten out about Sheree because she will find any excuse not to pay, okay? She will say, look, my quote said you were gonna do this balloon arrangement of 300 balloons and I counted and it's only 299 balloons, I'm not paying. That's the energy that Sheree gives. So now it's time for Drew's sex scene, okay? And in all honesty, she looked good. She sounded good. It looked and sounded believable to me. Todd was watching very intensely, and he seemed to be very pleased and excited by Drew's performance, okay? So that's good. So now we're at Marlo's event, okay? And she is honoring successful people who made it out of the foster care system. Listen, I love the cause. I love this event. I think it's beautiful. And it's important for us to see people coming out of such a rough childhood, living in different homes, feeling abandoned, and to come out of that and make something of yourself. I really love that Marlo did this event. So everyone is dressed in a shade of blue, and that is because blue is the color of the ribbon for foster care. So at first, when Courtney arrives to the event, she lets Marlo know that Sheree might not make it. And of course, Marlo was upset about that. But we see Scott Lee. He shows up in his blue. He looked really nice, but he was late, okay? And then Sheree shows up even later, okay? So her two closest people was late to her event. All right, y'all. So it is the day of Sheree's event, and her home looks beautiful. The balloon arrangement, it, everything. It looks amazing. The color scheme, I love the natural tones, the browns, the beige, the baby pink. I love it. It was so nice. When Sanya arrived, she low-key tells Sheree, like, girl, you did too much. <laughs> But we know that's how Sheree gets down, right? Production asked Sheree, is this party for you or is it for the grandbaby? And Sheree was like, oh, oh but, well, it's for both of us. It's for both of us. I'm a glamma. This is my first time being a glamma. Blah, 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 blah. Girl, Sheree, we know that that party is primarily for you. And we know this because in the beginning of the episode, when the baby's mother was talking about plans for the party and you thought that she said clowns, right? You were like, oh, oh my God, clowns. Well, what if the baby liked clowns? What if she told you the baby like clowns? Would you would you put clowns in the party? Because from your reaction, it doesn't look like you would put clowns in the party because you don't like clowns. But the party is not for you. It's for you and the baby. Primarily, it's for the baby. Anywho, so Sheree is in hair and makeup, you know, getting ready. And the party planners come to her and they start discussing everything, letting her know that everything is set up, everything is good to go. And Sheree is like, oh, I think that we're probably at like $200 a plate by now. And the planner says, actually, it's probably more than that. And she's like, yeah, it probably is. Listen, it is very important to Sheree that us, the viewer, we know how much she's spending on things. It's very important to Sheree that we have the idea or the illusion that she just got money like that. When clearly we all know better. Sheree is super materialistic. She very much gives keeping up with the Joneses, living above her means, ordering things and not paying for it. Okay, I see why her and Marlo get along so well. But at least we didn't see anybody tearing down the balloons, okay? We didn't see anybody smashing the cupcakes that they brought because Sheree didn't pay for them, right? The episode aired. We didn't see anyone on Twitter blasting her, on Instagram blasting her for not receiving their funds. So, Sheree, we're off to a good start, and I am proud of you. Good job. This is a first for you. <laughs> So meanwhile, on the other side of town, we are on day six of shooting the past, and Drew is doing a reading in the trailer with one of her co-stars, right? And we hear Drew say this is the last time that she gonna do a movie that's below Lifetime. Like, if it's below Lifetime, she not doing it. Now listen, Drew, you got a lot of <laughs> you got a lot of nerve. In all honesty, you really do. Now I do understand her feeling weird about shooting the sex scene in Candy and Todd's bed. That's a no-no for me. That is a bit weird. Other than that, though, I have no problem with them shooting the film in their home. But Drew, if this movie was so beneath you, why'd you do it in the first place? Why'd you do it? You didn't have to take the role, right? You booked and busy. You got people beating down your door to get you in their movie, right? Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. You needed the role. So don't be ungrateful, because I'm sure if Candy had recasted you, you would have made a big fuss about that too. But when I tell y'all 
that this scene pissed me off in a way that I was not expecting. When I tell y'all that this scene irritated my soul in a way that I was not expecting. Okay, look, Drew was in the middle of doing a reading with her co-star and Ralph asked her co-star, who is on the heavier side, Ralph asked the co-star if he's sure he can squeeze out of the seat that he's in. I beg your fucking pardon. I beg your pardon. And I'm like, are these two friends, like, do they know each other? And these are the types of jokes that they crack with each other all the time. Or is this Ralph's first time meeting this man? What the hell was that about? And Drew looked shocked and embarrassed. She was like, oh my God, Ralph. I was so irritated by that. And the guy, he laughs it off and, you know, they dap each other up and he walks out of the trailer. But that was so disgusting. Ralph, who the hell do you think you are? That was just rude as hell to me. And I think that Ralph got a lot of nerve, okay, because we saw what you were working with at Drew's photo shoot. And (laughs) I, I wasn't impressed. I'm sure when you took your ass down to audition for Chocolate City, they were probably asking you the same thing. I'm sure the guys who were there were younger than you and a lot more toned than you. If you want to play, we could play. You want to make fat jokes? What's wrong with you? Ralph irritates me so much because in every single episode, we see him constantly try to bring someone else down to big himself up. And I'm like, maybe it's because Drew was alone in the trailer with this guy. He felt intimidated. I don't know. And I really don't care. That comment was unnecessary and uncalled for. Did you get casted in Chocolate City? I bet you didn't. Because I wouldn't want to see you on stage. The fuck? I don't know why that scene irritated me so much. Maybe it's just because I didn't like Ralph, but I really felt bad for that guy because it came off as bullying and I don't like bullies. Anyway, if y'all can't tell, that scene pissed me the hell off. So Ralph sits his cone head ass down and is it just me, but is it in every scene that we see Ralph in, he's trying to look sexy and he don't. (laughs) He don't. Y'all already know I do not see it for Ralph, but he's always like, smizing, I feel like, squinting his eyes. Half the time I'm like, is he even listening to what Drew is saying or is he just posing? I feel like he's just posing all the time, trying to look good on camera. So Ralph and Drew start discussing Drew's character, whose name is Nina, and Drew is just mentioning all of the things that she has in common with Nina, and Ralph is like, oh, and she's a lesbian too, right? And in his confessional, Ralph says that he appreciates the fact that his wife is a thespian, and I'm like, why the air quotes? Why the air quotes? As much as I shade Drew, she's an actress, okay? Drew has credits. She's been in movies. Like, she's an actress. You you can't take that away from her. Why is he putting it in air quotes? Again, trying to minimize what she does. And on top of that, he's complaining about what? Having to be a father, right? He's upset because Drew is out working and he has to pick up the slack at home. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm sure when you were in Tampa and no one knew what the hell you were doing, Drew had to pick up the slack, right? I'm sure when you were in Vegas a couple of weeks ago shaking your stank funky ass auditioning for Chocolate City, a role that I'm sure you did not get, Drew had to pick up the slack in the household, right? So what's the problem? Why can't you do the same for her now that she's working? And be a father and be the leader of your household. Why, why, why is that so hard for you to do? Are you kidding me? I cannot stand Ralph Pittman. I really can't. So Ralph wants to know if Drew kissed a woman in her scene. He wants to know if she used tongue. He wants to know if there was an eaten out scene. And these questions were making Drew a bit uncomfortable. So she dances around the questions. And in her confessional, she says, you know what? Ralph just wants to make jokes. He doesn't take my job seriously. And I really wish that he did. Drew also mentions to him, this is the most questions that you've asked about this role, period. And this is day six of filming. So she's been at that shoot for six days and he hasn't asked her any questions about it but now that she's doing a lesbian role he has all the questions in the world so anyways we see everyone is finally arriving to Sheree's event because that's what it is Sheree's event (laughs) okay the baby is just making a little guest appearance so we see Sanya and Candy and Sanya tells Candy like hey girl I called you and you didn't call me back and Candy's like oh I know I'm sorry I was shooting until 6 a.m in the morning and Sanya's like girl save it I don't care (laughs) Candy is a good sport because if I was Candy I would have been like hold on bitch What you're not about to do is practice growing your backbone with me, (laughs) okay? Because we know that this is not your energy anyway. So I'm here being apologetic and explaining to you why I didn't call you back. And you talking about, oh, girl, I don't want to hear it. Okay, well, bitch, that's what happened. That's what happened. If you want to practice growing a backbone, right, and you want to show people that you can stand up for yourself, go practice it with somebody else. Don't practice that shit with me. I'm not the one. But Candy was a good sport about it. 
So we see the lovely Cynthia Bailey arrive looking beautiful, like as usual. Hello. Then we see Courtney. She shows up. Shamia and Magneta show up. And I just love the color scheme. Everyone looks amazing. It was so beautiful. Everything about it. I loved it. Why when Kenya showed up, the host <laughs> or whoever, she had a clipboard. She asked Kenya her name and Kenya was like, uh, Kenya Moore. Like, but girl, don't play with me. You know who I am. <laughs> The girl was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Kenya's friend, whose name I still don't know, she clearly did not get the memo because she showed up in baby blue, but she had something beige underneath. I would have took my jacket off. I would have felt so out of place. <laughs> I would have felt so out of place being the only one in baby blue. So we also find out that apparently Shamia knows Courtney from somewhere back in the day, girl, who cares? And Shamia tells Courtney, I heard that you've been cutting up. And Courtney's like, no, not too much, <laughs> not too much. Yeah, girl, you have been cutting up. But like I said in my previous reviews, I can respect the fact that Courtney does not back down. I do like that. Even though she'll lie and claim that she doesn't use certain words, at least she'll engage with a little bit of confrontation. I can appreciate that. So next we see Sheree's ex-husband, Bob Whitfield, show up. It seems like they are in a better place. They have a good relationship. They're laughing and joking. I'm sorry, I could never laugh and joke with someone who put their hands on me, but it seems like they worked everything out. So they take some pictures together, and in Sheree's confession, Professional, she says that while they were together, she felt like a married single mom because she was the one raising the kids while Bob was off working, cheating, you know, all the shenanigans. So she says that seeing Bob in this role as a grandfather, it really warms her heart and that he's doing an amazing job. So we see Martel show up at the party and he arrives so that he can stand at the door and collect $20 from everybody who arrives. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> But thankfully, Sheree was able to pay for this party all by herself because we know that if Martel did, he would be asking everyone in attendance to cash up him $20 before the night was over. So when Martel arrives, he's a little late. And Sheree is like, what took you so long? Why are you so late? And he was like, uh, I got five kids and three girlfriends. Like, what you mean? <laughs> like, I'm a busy man. And she's like, OK, OK. <laughs> he didn't say the girlfriend's <laughs> I know that I have to make sure that I clarify what was really said and not said because I know some people don't actually watch the show. They just watch reviews. So he didn't say the girlfriend's part, y'all, but he did say the five kids part, okay? So we see Drew show up and she calls Candy on the phone and she lets her know like, hey girl, I'm outside, but I'm not coming in because I see that Anthony is here, right? And we know that Anthony is that messy ass assistant. He used to be Drew's assistant. He's also Sheree's assistant. He was spreading rumors about Ralph and stuff like that. He also talked shit about Sheree, which is interesting that she would invite him to her party. But Drew says that Anthony assaulted her. Now I did watch Candy speak on it and she had Jamie That's Me as her co-host. I think that is so dope. Sidebar. Candy is dope as hell for giving small YouTubers a platform to co-host with her. I hope to see so many more people come on. I, th I think that's just super dope. But anyway, Candy did say that the reason why Drew was late is because, like she said before, they were shooting to like 6 a.m. in the morning, right? Candy also says that this altercation that happened between Anthony and Drew happened at Nini's nightclub, Lanethia. Candy says that Drew said that Anthony actually tried to fight her in the club, right? Which is crazy. Did y'all see the clip of when Anthony arrived? Did y'all see how he just bust through those people? What is wrong with him? What, something is wrong with him. Something is wrong with him. If you go back and watch the clip, the way that he just shoved himself through those people, I was like, is he okay? He's very aggressive. He's very aggressive, very confrontational, very messy. So Magneta and Candy go outside to speak to Drew and find out what's going on. Drew fills them in on why she doesn't feel comfortable coming inside to the party, and rightfully so. Drew also tells the ladies that she doesn't understand why Sheree would invite Anthony to her event knowing that she's going to be there, also knowing what happened. And I'm like, uh, Drew, Sheree is not your friend. <laughs> she doesn't give a fuck about you. Drew needs to get this thought of building a friendship with Sheree out of her head because it's not happening. Sheree, do not fuck with you like that. So after some hours, Sheree finally graces everyone with her presence, okay? The producers actually ask Sheree, why did she invite Anthony? And Sheree lets us know that Anthony is actually the one who hooked her and Martell up. What? So Candy goes over to Sheree and lets her know, like, look, girl, Drew was outside, but she left because of Anthony. And he butts into the conversation and he says, ain't nobody worried about Drew's wide ass. Now, sir, first of all, simmer down. <laughs> 
simmered down. Nobody was speaking to you. So he starts going off and he's like, I don't even have a problem with Drew. My only issue with Drew is that she owes me a coin. And my only issue with Drew is that her marriage is failing and that her edges are like, he just started going in being thirsty as hell, trying to get some camera time. And it was so ridiculous. He looks like a thirsty ass fool. So he says that Drew was just mad because he read her. And after he read her, Drew threw her purse at him. And because Drew threw her purse at him, that's why he threw his shoe at her. But he says that he would never try to hit a woman he says that he lives for women okay but honestly the energy that he is giving drew made the right decision by not coming to that party because i can only imagine how he would have showed his ass if drew had showed up in person and because drew didn't show up and he didn't get that moment with her he tried to do the most by butting into candy's conversation and we know that drew could tell a liar too so she very well might have hit him first but the energy that he is giving here makes him look like the aggressor. So based on what I'm seeing now, I'm going to believe Drew's story because he seemed like a hot ass mess and I wouldn't put it past him to go upside a woman's head. I just wouldn't. So next we see Kenya say hey to Martel and he's like, hi. <laughs> and Kenya asks if they can have a conversation and Martel is like, mm, no, he's not really with it. He does not really want to speak to Kenya, but she's like, no, it'll be good. It'll be a good conversation. So they step aside and Kenya tells Martel like, look, Sheree's my girl. I'm always going to be there for Sheree. But in the situation that happened between us, I was just defending myself and matching your energy because I didn't have a man with me to match your energy, right? So they have a little chat about it and Martel apologizes, but but then he asked Kenya, like, do you think that you were wrong in this situation at all? Kenya says, no, I don't think I was wrong because I was defending myself and I never raised my voice and I never cursed at you. And they damn sure played the tape back and Kenya raised her voice and she cursed at him. <laughs> OK, but they do agree to call it a truce. They hug it out and I guess they agree to let bygones be bygones. But we'll see. So, child, we finally get to see this baby at the sip and see. OK, and is it me? I don't care if this is Sheree's house. I don't care if she's putting on the party. I found it weird that Sheree, the grandma, was the one pushing the baby out in the stroller because I'd be damned if that's my child and she's being revealed by her grandma pushing the baby through the sip and see. Now, we could share the stroller. We could do it together. But did y'all see when they showed a clip of the baby mom and she was like fighting for her life, trying to get through the crowd while Sheree is... <laughs> Sheree is walking with the baby. She's posing for the pictures. And you got the baby mom throwing bowls, trying to get through the crowd. Hell no. What the hell? Now, for all we know, it could very much just be editing. Maybe the mom was more involved, but we only saw Sheree. And I hope that that's the case. But what is giving is giving that Sheree is one of those overbearing grandmothers. Just annoying as hell. Ciao. So now they're taking family photos, okay? Bob brings this woman over to Sheree, and we see her shake hands with the woman, and she says, hi, nice to meet you. So that implies that Sheree's never met this woman before, right? So everyone else is trying to figure out who this woman is. Is this Bob's girlfriend? And then Candy actually makes a joke and she says, is that one of his daughters? Don't tell me he got another daughter out there. So this woman is standing in front of Bob in the picture. Sidebar, when Sheree grabbed Martel and brought him in the picture, I was like, now nah, Sheree, why the hell is Martel in your family photos? But then she says that she thought that Bob was trying to be shady by bringing his little girlfriend in the picture. So she snatched up her me and her man, her man, Martel, and put him in the picture. Come to find out, that ain't Bob's girl. That's his daughter. <laughs> what? So after they take all their pictures, Sheree tells Bob, hey, introduce me to Candace, okay? So Bob brings her over, and he's like, daughter. And Sheree is like, what? Oh, my God, we were married. You never told me this. I didn't know any of this. What? So in her confessional, Sheree lets us know that when she met Bob, he told her that he had two children. But come to find out, I guess he really had three and he never thought that it was important to let her know, oh, hey, by the way, I have a third child. But Candace is very nice, super sweet. She speaks to Sheree and lets her know that she's actually spent time with her siblings. And I'm like, so Sheree's own children didn't tell her that they have a half sister? Isn't that crazy? So she's been to family events. The other kids know her and Sheree has no idea who this woman is. I think that's foul as hell. If she really doesn't know, I think that that is foul as hell. Candy says that this was the real baby reveal for the night, okay? <laughs> so the ladies call Bob over and they're like, um, hey, Bob, why haven't you ever told Sheree that you have another daughter? And Bob says, oh, I didn't tell her because we were only on a need to know basis. They're like, um, sir, that was your wife. Y'all were married. <laughs> How much more need to know can you get? 
Bob really disgusts me. He's one of those people who thinks that everything is a damn joke. Remember, we saw seasons ago when Sheree brought up that he put hands on her. He made a joke out of it. Everything is funny to him. It's gross. So the ladies are trying to get a serious answer out of Bob, and it's not going to happen. He's a very unserious person. But I guess he also feels like I didn't even explain myself to Sheree, so I'm damn sure not about to explain myself to y'all. Hello? I did see a couple of mixed opinions on Twitter regarding this situation. So some people think that Sheree did know, but she was just acting dumb to keep up appearances and not to look crazy in this situation. Some people feel that Sheree really is that dumb <laughs> and she really did not know about this daughter. Others say that Sheree is just truly over Bob, so she really didn't know and she really doesn't give a damn because she's completely over him. I find it very hard to believe that Sheree didn't know. To think that this lady has been around her other children and none of them told Sheree, I, I just can't believe that. And if they didn't, that's an even bigger situation. Like, y'all didn't tell y'all mom? That your dad has another kid? Tell me what y'all think below. I think that Sheree did know, but she didn't want it to appear that she knew at the party because she didn't want to feel embarrassed. So she was just trying to act like, oh, what? I had no idea. I didn't know anything about this. Oh, it's fine. I don't care. But I think that she did know about this girl. Is it that she knew about the girl, but she just never met her in person before? I don't know. It's a mess. I guess we'll find out more in the episodes to come. Tell me what y'all thought about this episode below. Get in the comments. And as always, we gonna talk about it. Don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. You already know the vibe. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye! Bye. Bye.